So we have been solving linear equations. We've been solving linear or equations that give us a linear equation in form while solving. In front of us, we have solved the equation x over the quantity x plus 4, and this is equal to 9 eighths. So looking at this, um, I notice I have a variable in my denominator. And so since I have a variable in my denominator, I have to worry about getting an answer that would make this um, undefined. And so I can't have any value which would set my denominator equal zero. So I know that x plus four cannot equal zero. And so x could not be negative four. So if I got that as part of my solution, I would exclude it. Now going to solve this, I see that I have fractions within the equation. So I would like to clear my fractions. So I'm looking at four, the least common denominator of x plus four and eight. Um, you might see that this is a fraction equal a fraction. We can do cross multiplying, but really when you're doing cross multiplication, what you're doing is you're multiplying by the least common denominator or not necessary, a common denominator. So I notice that I have eight and I have X plus four. X plus four doesn't divide into eight and eight doesn't divide into X plus four. So I need both pieces as part of my Denom um, common denominator. And in this case, it's the least common denominator. So we're going to take that least common denominator, and we, because this is an equation, we can do this. We're going to multiply both sides of the equation by this 8 times x plus 4. So add that all times x all over x plus 4 is equal to 9 eighths times 8 times x plus 4. So we caused it so that when we multiplied by the common denominator, our denominator would go away because we're now canceling like factors. So I have an x plus 4 in here. Think of it as a numerator over x plus 4 in the denominator. I can do that because it's strictly multiplication. And I would be left with that 8 times the x. This is equal to. So again, I can simplify. I see that I have eight in the denominator and eight in the numerator. So I'm left here with nine times the quantity X plus four. So I notice it's linear. I notice that I can simplify down one side of the equation. So normally I go through simplifying um, both sides of the equation before I try to move things over to each side. So bringing down eight X, this is equal to Let's distribute our 9. So 9 times x is 9x. And 9 times 4 gives us plus 36. We want to get our terms with x by itself and the terms without the x on the other side, the constant. So I notice I could subtract 9x on both sides of this equation. Doing so, 8x minus 9x is negative x. And this would then equal 36. Well, I don't want negative x, I want positive x equals. So multiply both sides by negative 1 or divide both sides by negative 1, we get x would equal to negative 36. So this was not the value. That we said it couldn't be. And so as long as we did our algebra right, that should be or arithmetic right, that should be the correct answer. Okay. Okay, so another problem um, solving the equation. This time we have three over x minus five equals negative three over the quantity x plus two plus then nine over the quantity x minus five times x plus two in the denominator. Looking at this, I can see there's two values which x cannot be. x can't be 5 because 5 minus 5 is 0, and x cannot be negative 2. So we're hoping that we don't have any of those part of our solution. Next thing I would look at is what is my least common denominator between the two of these? And my least common denominator 
well, actually there's three fractions. For all three fractions is the x minus five, that quantity times the quantity x plus two. So let's multiply both sides by our common denominator, x minus 5, x plus 2. So looking at this, um, on the left-hand side, I noticed the factors of x minus 5 cancels. And so I'm technically left here with this 3 all times x plus 2. This is equal to, I am really distributing this whole x minus 5, x plus 2 to each piece. So here I would have negative 3 over x plus 2, all times that x minus 5 times x plus 2. Plus, I would have the 9 all over x minus 5 times the quantity x plus 2 times x minus 5 times x plus 2. So simplifying over here on the right-hand side of the equation, notice we had x plus 2 in common for that first piece. I'm going to bring down the rest on the left-hand side. So that would leave us with negative 3 times that quantity x minus 5 plus, and over here, x minus 5, x plus 2, those both cancel, and I'm just left with the 9. So we can simplify both sides of the equation by using our distributive property. So we had 3 times x plus 3 times 2. Well, 3 times x is 3x, plus 3 times 2 is 6. Now let's distribute our negative 3. So I have negative 3 times x is negative 3x. Negative 3 times negative 5 is plus 15, plus 9. Again, I see I can simplify a little further on the right-hand side. So bring down the left-hand side, 3x plus 6. This is equal to negative 3x. 15 plus 9 is plus 24. So we want constants to one side, terms with variables to the other. So I notice I could add 3x to both sides, get the x terms with x on the left, and I could subtract 6 on both sides to get the constant on the right. So doing so, I get 3x plus 3x is 6x. This is equal to 24 minus 6, which is 18. Let's divide both sides by 6, and 6 goes into 18 three times. So x is equal to 3. And I'm happy it's not one of these that I excluded. So our solution is x plus, or x equals 3. So the next equation that we have in front of us has multiple variables. We have the variable capital G is equal to C divided by the quantity 1 minus V. And so we want to solve in this case for V. Um, we approach these just like we just approached the other equations. Let's clear our fraction. Um, I noticed that only there's only one fraction. And so my denominator is what I'm going to choose to multiply both sides of my equation by, which is 1 minus b in this case. So if I distribute my g here, I would get g times 1 is g minus v times g. This is equal to, and then my 1 minus v is canceling on both sides. So this is equal to just c. So I'm trying to get the term with a variable I'm trying to get by itself. Um, all the terms with that variable on one side of the equal sign and everything else to the other side of the equal sign. And so let's do that. We can subtract G, capital G on both sides of the equation. And so I get negative VG is equal to C minus G. 
So I'm almost there. I want to get G, I want to get V. So I need to get rid of that G times negative one times that V. So I can do that by dividing both sides of the equation by negative G. And so here I would get V is equal to C minus G over negative G. And so there's multiple ways that we can rewrite this. I can't just cancel out those G there because in the numerator, that's not multiplication, it's um, addition in between the C and the, the G, negative G. And so I could think of it as breaking it up as two separate fractions. This is equivalent to C divided by negative G minus, I'm just gonna do it for now, G over negative G. V is equal to, I tend not to like the negative in the denominator, so I can actually pull it out front. So this is the same thing as negative CG, C divided by G. Um, negative, negative is positive, plus G now divided by G, I can simplify that as one. So either way that you write it um, is right. There's one other thing I might do. I might pull that negative out from my denominator. So pulling this negative out front all over G. And then if we wanted to, it's equivalent to distributing the negative to the numerator. So negative C plus G over G. It doesn't matter how we add things. So I could rewrite it as C all over G minus C over G. And you'll notice if you break it down as two separate fractions, we would get the same thing. G divided by G is one minus C divided by G. So those are so all represent the same thing. 